Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing, and welcome to my video on the headstander fly. Now, this fly is built for bass, for a walleye, for carp, and I suppose you could use it for trout too, it would work. Uh, it's based on the conventional fishing method called shaky head, which involves using a jig hook and a soft plastic worm. And the idea is that as that jig hook is bounced across the bottom, the uh, worm sort of waves in the water column uh, and uh, entices the bass to come and give it a whack. Well, this particular fly is designed to do basically the same thing. It's also tied on a jig hook and uh, it uses dumbbell eyes instead of uh, a lead weight that you'd see on a standard jig hook. And uh, it's designed to basically stand on his head and you can dance it across the bottom and the, uh, the uh, rabbit wing just kind of pulsates uh, high up in the water column. And if you've got a slow current, you're fishing it in a river, for example, you get a little slow current, it'll wave that tail even when it's sitting on the bottom and you're not moving it. Uh, the other interesting thing about using rabbit fur for the wing is that when we cast rabbit fur, we shake the water out of it and it will absorb some air so that when it uh, gets, uh, hits the bottom, the uh, tail will continue to uh, be buoyant. Now, I've even tried this where I've left the tail in the water for over 24 hours and it still had some buoyancy in it. Uh, rabbit fur wants to hang on to air, so this will stay buoyant and you can fish along the bottom and that uh, rabbit wing will wave seductively. Now, for, for anybody starting out with rabbit wings, this is an interesting tie in that it's a clouser style with the clouser eyes, yet we're using a rabbit wing, and that requires us to do one little extra step that uh, most people won't do with a clouser, and that is we're going to actually have to remove the uh, hook from the vise to get the uh, wing on, so you'll see how that's done. So let's get started and have a look at the material we're going to use. Our hook for the day is a, a Mustad jig hook, and uh, there's a variety of them out there, they all work. Um, you see this one's got a sort of a 60 degree bend to it. Um, I'd recommend that. It'll help to stand up. You can think of the fly being arranged this way. It helps it to stand up uh, on the bottom, especially when we get the, uh, the eyes tied on at the right angle. We're using uni thread 6 art. Yeah, any kind of brown thread will do. And we're using gold, gold wire rib to hold the uh, wing on. Our body is this creamy white chenille. I'm using these orange uh, rubber legs, and you notice we've got some black and orange. I prefer a uh, rubber leg that is variegated like this. It adds an extra bit of uh, enticement when it moves. And our wing is uh, Zonka rabbit strips, and uh, I, I'm cutting off roughly a two and three quarter to a three inch section to use. Oh yes, and I almost forgot the most important part. The uh, Clouser eyes. Okay, let's start by putting on a base of thread for our clouser eyes. Now when I'm tying these eyes in, I want an angle, this angle here, to uh, enable this fly to stand on its head. So if I make this eye, these eyes too far back, it won't work. If I put them too far forward, I'll have trouble tying my material on. So you want to go back as far as you can and still have like a three point um, area for the uh, fly to stand up, right? Now it won't stand up right um, in the air. If you're not in water, it won't stand up right. But as soon as you put it in water, it will stand up right. No problem at all. Next step is our gold wire. And just wind that back. Now there's another important part of this fly is you keep going part of the way around the bend and you'll see why when we tie the wing on. If I don't go around the bend like this, when you tie the wing on the wing will start to tuck around the bend of the hook and that causes problems when you then when you pull it through the water it wants to roll. So this going around the bend ensures that the wing stays on straight and you'll see that when we get to that point and tie it in. Next step is to tie in our chenille. And we want to bring that back around the bend 
Now we're going to bring our thread forward and we start wrapping our chenille on. Now I've got a rotary vise and I could use the rotary vise to do this, but I'm just showing you how we would do it without the rotary vise because not everybody has one. Now I'm leaving a little bit of a gap here because that's where our rubber legs are going to go. Okay, so I'll put that in my material holder along with the wire. Next step is to put in our rubber legs. Now I've cut these rubber legs up. I'm using two per side. And what I'm going to do is just put that in there roughly at the same length. Put a couple of wraps in there. Straighten them out. Then I'll bring that one forward and put some wraps behind it. Okay, and then flip it over. Do the same thing with this one. Now these do poke around quite a bit, that's all right. We're just going to get them tucked back in that fashion. There we go. Now just make sure you're, when you're doing that, it's very easy to move the eyes. So just check that they're straight. And we'll fit, you'll see some of these will move around a little bit. We'll, we can fix those as we go. When you're tying on rubber legs, that's fairly common. They move around. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our chenille and we're going to wrap this on. But before I do that, I'm going to put a fair bit of glue on here. Helps to hold the rubber legs in place, holds the eyes in place. And this is an opportunity to straighten up any rubber legs that are moving around a bit. You come around. And now we tie that off. Make sure your thread's out of the way. There we go. And just clean that up a little bit. Now this one here, these are sticking up a bit, so I'll just pull them down. And when I put the uh, wing on, you'll see that that will stay in place. Now here's the tricky bit where we put our wing on. And this is an example of how to put a rabbit wing on when you're using a Clouser style fly. I'm going to measure this. I want to this part here just to extend past the eye of, eye of the hook. And I want to put my finger right where that bend is, right there. You see right where we've left our material off. Now I'm just going to come around, hold my, just poke it through. Try to get it past the hook, the, uh, Barb of the hook. Now we're going to take it off the vise, work it round, and put it back in the vise. Now, if you've got any rubber legs that are not doing what they're supposed to, this is an opportunity to straighten them out. Now, if you wanted to, you could put a drop of glue in here. I don't really think it's all that necessary, but you can if you wanted to. I'll bring this forward. Now once it's started, it will shift around, so take the moment to put it back into position and then wrap. What I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to overdo the head a little bit, which is fine. This is a bass fly, it's not meant to be pretty, so we can have a large head, it doesn't matter. Now, when everything's in place, I'll just clean that up a little bit. Now, the last step is to use a wire rib, and I'm going to use my bodkin here to separate the hair, and also to keep the rubber legs out of the way. Now, this is where we want to straighten everything else out and just be aware of your rubber legs. Give them, give it a flick, poke through with your bodkin, move the hair out of the way, move 
draw the legs out of the way. This is fiddly, but uh, it's an essential part of the fly. Take the moment to straighten it out, get the rubber legs out of the way. You can also turn it like this if you've got a rotary vise. If you've trapped any fibers uh, in the fur, you can use your bodkin to pick them out. I t always take a, a moment to stop and just check the alignment. Now I can wrap this around the front of these legs and the last bit goes in front of the eyes. And just put a wrap around to hold it. Now I can wrap this on. Now our final step is just to clean this up. Just check it all, make sure everything's in alignment. Now I can whip finish. And the last step is I like to go through the fur and make sure that I haven't trapped too many uh, fibers. You just use your bud kid to pick them out. Make sure it looks good. Everything's in alignment. Now we just need some head cements and we can go fishing with it. So now when you're out there on the river or on the lake and you're fishing this, you have a certain number of choices. If it's not deep water, I'd recommend just a floating line and a fairly long leader, a fluorocarbon leader. And what you're trying to do is make this fly jig in this fashion. Now, if you're uh, fishing deeper water, I'll look at using a sink tip rather than a full sinking line. Again, the sink tip will allow it to curve down. So when you pull back up, the fly rises, then it drops. Also, if uh, it is able to sit in current, if the current's slow and you're able to let it sit for a moment, that tail will or that wing, I should say, will wave seductively in the water, even when it's sitting still. So you could use a stop and start method to fish this as well. So give it a try, give it different methods of fishing. Um, try it fast, try it slow, try it straight retrieve, try it a jigged retrieve. It'll fish a number of different ways. And if you fish it right along the bottom, you have a good shot at catfish, carp, as well as walleye and bass. And you know, I'd give this a try for trout too. I think it would work. Anyway, get out there with it. It's called the Headstander Fly, and it works. Yeah, you'll have fun with it. Cheers.